Life, wisdom, psyche truth, massage. Hi, I'm Jen Hillman, and today we are continuing our exploration into Thai massage techniques. So Donnie is our lovely massage model that's going to be working with me today. And so some of the techniques that I'm going to show you today are really great for improving mobility in the hips and helping to relieve a tightness and tension that just inevitably gets built up in your hips. So this is good for people that have sciatic pain, people that even sometimes have low back pain, or just tightness in your hips in general. So these techniques that I'm going to show you today are really great for helping to alleviate that tightness in the hips. And so go ahead and favorite this video so you can come back and practice and get yourself a partner that you can follow along with us today and um, get yourself comfortable on a mat on the floor or maybe just um, put a yoga mat down or even just lying directly on the floor is fine. If you uh, get some pillows and things to help your partner feel really comfortable is a nice way to get started. All right, so to begin, you just have your partner lie down and just kneel comfortably between their feet. And just be sure that their feet are close enough to you that you don't have to reach way far out to make contact with them. You just want their feet nice and close alongside your body. And a really simple way to get connected and grounded is just to bring your feet, hands directly onto your partner's feet and just apply a gentle and steady pressure, just getting connected and kind of taking this moment to tune in with your partner. And I might do a little warm up just to help her get relaxed by gently walking my hands down her feet. And a little rocking motion going back and forth side to side. Walk my hands down to her toes and then back up towards her heels. And for a really great and complete warm up, you can check out my introduction to Thai massage video that shows some really nice ways to connect with your partner at the beginning of a massage and help them get relaxed and grounded as you prepare to move into some of these techniques that I'll show you today. So once you're warmed up and ready to move into these hip stretches, I'll use my hand to help bend her knee and just bring the sole of her foot inside her other leg. So now her hip is open and ready to be stretched. So I'll just kind of stabilize myself with my legs and I'll bring one hand onto her knee that's open and my other hand just above her knee that's straight. And then from here, I'll just gently lean in and apply a steady pressure to stretch the inside of her hip. And I'll walk my hands in a little closer, moving up towards her hip more. And again, lean in with steady pressure. And then I'll walk my hands one step closer. Lean in. And then I start to walk my hands back down towards her knees. And so I am using a little bit of an outward pressure, it's gently pressing her knee away to help open her hip and stretch into the inner groin a little bit more. And from here, I'll go ahead and just move my hand down to her foot. And again, I'm going to start walking my hand up to her hip and use my hand that's on her heel and just ground her heel down. And so here I've got a nice rocking motion going on, which helps her to feel grounded and relaxed. Then as I start to make my way back down to her knee, I'm going to walk my other hand up her calf, again making my way in towards her knee. And once both of my hands are come together at her knee, then I'll place both hands like little butterfly wings and spread my fingers apart 
and wrap my fingers around her leg and again gently apply pressure as I walk my hands up. And walk my hands back down. Then I'll basically repeat that whole sequence in reverse. So I'll walk my hands up towards her hip and down towards her ankle. And then walk my hand back down to her knee while using my other hand to ground through her heel. So once I've done that little sequence, we can start to stretch into her hip more. So I'm gonna use my outside hand to lift up on her knee. So I'm really using the strength of my hand so she doesn't have to do any work. She can completely relax and I've got her with her foot and her knee so her leg isn't gonna go anywhere that I don't want it to go. So then I'll step my outside leg close in by her hip, even making contact with her body so she feels really supported. And then I'll bring her foot into my hip crease. And again, I'm using my knee to stabilize at, the, uh, at her shin. So her leg is very, very supported and stable. It's not gonna go anywhere that I don't want it to go. So from here, I'll bring my hand on top of her knee, then I'll use my other hand right on top of her thigh. So from here, I'm gonna lean in to help deepen this crease in her hip. Now, Donnie is really flexible, so I can really give a lot of pressure and lean way in. Your partner may not be as flexible, so that's okay. You just tune into their body, and you'll know how far you can go because their body will kind of start to resist you. And you can move this stretch to the inner part of the thigh by opening her knee out to the side. Now I'm also gonna use my leg that's stabilized on the ground and actually hook my foot to the outside of her ankle so that this leg that's along the floor is gonna feel really stable, it's not going anywhere. I've kind of got her held in place using my ankle there. So now her knee is open to the side and I'm supporting her with my hand so she's got a lot of support and safety and her foot is still securely held in my hip crease. So I'm gonna use my free hand to apply pressure along her inner thigh and again we're gonna lean in to stretch into her hip. So I'll apply pressure to her thigh as I lean in. And then I just walk my hand in a little closer to her hip each time. And then I'll walk my hand back out towards her knee. And I'll start to stretch the outer part of her hip by releasing her foot from my hip crease. I've still got a good support with my hand and my knee. Then I just cross her knee over her body. Now, I'm gonna use my knee to stabilize her hip, because otherwise her hip is gonna wanna come off the ground. So I'm using my knee to keep her hip stable to the ground. And then again, using my hand to just stabilize her knee, we'll start to extend her heel straight. Now this is gonna stretch along the IT band in the outer part of the hip. Most people are not gonna be able to straighten their leg. So don't worry too much about that. 
Really just tune into your partner's body and give them the stretch that they need. And then I'll just repeat this three times to get a nice good stretch at the outer part of her thigh. And I'll gently lower her leg back down to the floor by supporting her ankle and her knee. Right, so I just keep her supported all the way down to the floor. So she never has to worry that I'm gonna drop her. She never has to worry that she's gonna get hurt because I support her the entire time. So let's try the other side. I use my hand to come inside her knee and help her crease her thigh open. Just bring the sole of her foot to the inside of her leg. Then I bring both hands just to the top of her knees. So I lean in with gentle pressure to start to stretch into her hips. And you can always check in with your partner by noticing the expression on their face. If they start to kind of scrunch their eyebrows up or have any tension in their mouth or their lips, then that's usually a pretty good sign that maybe you're using too much pressure. And so you can use that feedback to modify the amount of pressure that you're using. So I'll come down and place my hand to the inside of her heel and just gently walking one hand up towards her hip grounding her ankle at the same time. Then as I walk my hand down, I'll start to walk my other hand up her calf. And then when both of my hands come to meet at her knee, then I'll line my thumbs up right along the inside of her thigh and gently start to apply pressure walking both hands up towards her hip. And back down towards her knee. Where I basically just reverse the sequence. So I walk my hand down her calf and up her thigh. and stabilize her heel as I walk my hand back down towards her knee. All right, so now we'll start stretching into her hip a little more by using my hand to pick up her leg, nice and easy. Then I step my foot alongside her hip Bring her foot into my hip crease, and then I'll place my hand on top of her knee to help her feel stabilized. And I bring my other hand on top of her thigh that's reclined on the floor. Then I'll gently start to lean in while I'm simultaneously applying pressure to her leg that's on the floor. And then I walk this hand a step closer and lean in again. So I notice that her left side is just a little bit tighter, which you may notice on your partner that it feels different from one side to the other. And that's pretty normal. So you just listen to what's going on with your partner's body and just take care of them every step of the way. and we'll start to open her knee out to the side. I'm supporting her leg with my hand. And again, I'll hook my toes to the outside of her leg on the floor so that this leg feels really stable and secure the whole time. And I'll use my free hand to apply pressure to the inside of her thigh as I gently lean forward and stretch her inner thigh. And then I'll 
release her foot from my hip crease. Cross her knee over her body and stabilize her hip with my knee. I stabilize her knee with my hand and use my working hand to just extend her foot up towards her shoulder, getting that nice stretch across the outer part of her thigh. I'll repeat that three times and gently help support her leg as I lower it all the way back down to the floor. So that concludes this little sequence of hip opening stretches. So a lot of times at the end of a sequence, I like to just ground my partner back down by applying that steady pressure along her heels. You may even start to walk down to the arch of her foot and then down to her toes. And I make my way right back up towards her heels. Give your partner a moment to kind of recollect their energy and maybe give you some feedback about what felt good and what you can still work on. Then go ahead and trade spots. Favorite this video so you can come back and watch it again and take turns practicing these techniques. And don't get frustrated if it's not easy at the beginning. Some of this kind of takes a little practice, a little trial and error to really get the hang of it and find out how to make it smooth and fluid as you work through these techniques. But the more you practice, the easier it becomes and you can really sink into that space of relaxation as you practice with your friend and really help them to relax and then you'll find that it's also very relaxing for yourself. So thank you very much for watching. Go ahead and leave me a comment and let me know how this process is going for you. And if you'd like to learn more about me and my practice, you can visit my website, jenhillman.com. There's lots of great information there for you and a blog and lots of pictures and videos. And if you subscribe to the Psyche Truth channel, then you can also have access to my complete library of videos, as well as hundreds of other health and wellness and nutrition videos that can really help to improve the quality of your life.